Hello grandchildren, it looks darker in here because I just got off work and it's one in the morning. So I decided to go with mood lighting. Anyway, I didn't know what I should talk about for this entry. So I decided to talk about me talking. Specifically, I kind of, uh, I, I stutter-ish. I don't know if you can call it a stutter or not. And I don't know if you guys have actually noticed because I generally try to edit it out of the videos, but I know for a fact, at least some of the videos, it kind of snuck in there a little bit. But yeah, I, I have a, a, a speaking issue sometimes where, again, I don't know if I want to call it a stutter. I kind of repeat some syllables sometimes and I also pause a lot. The only way I usually ever talk without actually uh, having an issue getting the words out is if I'm talking really, really quickly, which you may have also noticed in some of the videos. I am most fluent at speaking when I'm talking really, really quickly. And I think I know why, and it's actually a really interesting reason. It's not like a normal speech impediment in the classical sense, like my brain can't process how to turn things into words. I guess this is kind of a story, so I'll go back a little bit. Uh, I've always kind of had an issue with focusing on things. Not everything. Uh, it, it's usually things that I don't have a particular interest in. I am very, very capable of focusing extremely well on things that I'm really interested in. So if I'm editing a, a short film or something, or if I'm writing music, or if I'm just telling a story, I'm able to focus very, very effectively, and like all of my brain power goes to that. But in the past, if there's something that I didn't really care about, or I didn't really feel like it was benefiting me, I don't have the ability to focus on it whatsoever. So if I have a test in front of me at a school, instead of my brain, like a normal person, kind of being like, okay, we should focus on the schoolwork because that's important and that'll benefit you in the future probably. Instead, my brain kind of goes into this other world where then all of a sudden I'm trying to come up with characters and what happens to them and what their lives were like, and what their parents were like and what the story is going to be like or what the song is going to sound like. The worst that had ever happened was in this English class my junior year in high school. Uh, th there was supposed to be this, this practice essay that we were writing and the entire class got this uh, prompt and we're supposed to be writing it and I had the paper out in front of me and everything and I'm not lying about this at all I literally just stared at the paper for 40 minutes and was thinking about other stuff and I didn't even realize until the 40 minutes were over that I didn't write anything down while the rest of the class had finished essays this kind of thing happens all the time where I get really really into a thought and I don't really realize what's happening around me. I, like, I, I just kind of block all of my senses out. It happened a lot, and we never really thought anything of it. Finally, I think it was my junior year in high school. It was either that, or it was the summer after my junior year. Um, I was on the internet, and I read uh, a post by somebody on uh, this website, and they had ADHD, and they were describing what ADHD was like. And all these people were asking them questions and they were answering and making analogies and trying to let these other people understand what it was like. And I read what he wrote and it was exactly like every single detail of what he described his ADHD being like was what just my everyday brain was like. And I thought I was normal. Okay, well, that's obviously not true because look at me. I don't want to bring you guys into this again, but... You don't exist and I'm talking to you. So that's not, that's not normal at all. <laughs> I, I, I thought I was pretty normal at least, mentally, but then this guy was describing exactly what he thought and I was reading it and I was like, no, no, that's, that's normal. That's how people think. That's how your brain works. But then everybody else started responding with, what? That's weird. That doesn't make sense. How does your brain work like that? And when there's dozens of people that are all confused by something that you think is normal, whatever you're doing probably isn't normal. If you live your entire life thinking that it's okay to take baths in grape jelly, and then you talk to people about it, and then they say that that's weird, maybe you should start looking into how normal people take baths. That was a completely unnecessary analogy. 
but I'm gonna keep it. So then I decided to try to test myself online, which always ends up good. And I, um, I found, I think it was like 10 different ADHD tests online, some from just random websites, some from like official medical websites. And I answered all the questions in all of them. And I got a, a wide variety of results from partial ADHD to holy shit, you definitely have ADHD, man. You should get medication. I'm paraphrasing what the website said because I don't remember exactly what it said, but it was probably something similar to that. So I started talking to my dad about it and he said that I could go to a psychologist to try to get myself tested to see if an actual doctor and not the internet would agree with my assessment that I had ADHD. And I also started talking to some of my friends about it and asking what they thought. And pretty much all of them were like, oh yeah, that makes sense that you would have ADHD. Thanks friends, that's what, that's what you're here for. To confirm that I'm not mentally normal. Anyway, I went to the doctor and he had me take like a 600 uh, question test that was like true or false and it was supposed to it wasn't about the questions it was supposed to be about like the patterns and how you answer the questions and those patterns would lead themselves to different types of mental disorders and stuff and th that was a th that was like a wide variety test that was supposed to see if you have anything wrong with you at all whether it's like ADHD or schizophrenia or you're like malnourished I don't know I don't know how you test for that with questions, because that's probably just like, do you get nourishment? No. You're malnourished. Anyway, um, uh, then he also take me, had me take this other test that's specifically for ADHD, and it was this really weird test where it would, uh, it was like a black screen, and then it would pop up different letters, and you were supposed to hit the space bar only when it was like this certain letter. And it, it was actually the most frustrating thing that I've, I think I've ever done in my life. It was, it was like, press the button when you see the letter P. And then you have to just sit there staring at the black screen for like 30 seconds and then a letter will pop up and startle you. And you're like, ah, ah, P, ah, oh no. And then you would just get scared and want to press the button. And then it would be like, okay, now press the space bar when you see a C. And then you just wait and it'd be like N, M, D, C. And then and, and it would just keep going off like letters and you just have to press the button the moment that it has the letter that you're supposed to. And it's terrifying. And I, it, I, it felt like forever also. It was supposed to be like only 10 minutes, but I honestly felt like I was playing this game for an hour. So I took that test and then he was like entering my results from this other test into a computer or whatever, and it was analyzing my answers. And then after that, I went in this waiting room, he talked to my dad, and then he brought me in and he started talking to me and he told me everything that was wrong with my brain. Fortunately, it did not tell me I was a sociopath. However, upon further investigation in the internet, I have found out that sociopaths don't pass sociopath tests because sociopaths manipulate tests to make it seem like they're not sociopaths. So maybe I am a sociopath and I rigged the system. The top answers that that test gave me were ADHD, mild depression, and this other one, I don't remember what it was. I think it was like uh, obsession with affection or something. The doctor told me about that one. He, he said that it had a really weird name, but it pretty much meant that I constantly try to become friends with people. So the depression one was interesting and I think that kind of makes sense because I was starting to go through this like panicky time in my life where I was freaking out about everything and I was scared about a lot of things and I was really worried a lot. I think I still am all of those things. I don't know. There's a lot of things that I'm afraid of and that I worry about. I should probably talk to you guys about that at some point. The, the, the most important one, though, on the list was attention deficit hyperactive disorder, inattentive type. Well, that just means I'm not the twitchy kind, I'm, I'm the, uh, the gets bored kind. And then the, and then the computer test that I took also confirmed the same thing, that I had borderline clinical attention deficit hyperactive disorder, inattentive type. So I left the psychologist knowing that I have ADHD. And he talked to me about options ranging from medication to just personal mental things that I could do to try to fix it. 
as far as focusing when I need to. I'm not really into taking drugs. I don't even take ibuprofen when I have headaches that much. And I was very definitely leaning away from taking some kind of medication that would like fix my brain uh, and make me focus better mainly because it's this mind-altering drug, but also I read a bunch about it. Uh, it's called Adderall, and a lot of the time if you have ADHD and you take it, you, uh, you, you pretty much everything about your personality changes. You lose your sense of humor, you become really serious, and you become really focused on everything that's happening. Also, apparently you get really, really bad calm down migraines from this medication. So I decided not to take that. Then he started t telling me about different methods that some people did to try to get over it, um, including like fidgeting and using like muscle movements and stuff. Uh, if you get like a stress ball, squeeze that when you're trying to focus or like uh, some people try to build things like with Legos or whatever in order to help them focus, things like that. Like, it really makes a lot of sense because pretty much most of my life, whenever I've tried to make or think of anything, I usually do that while I'm pacing around. I have to be walking around in circles in order to actually focus properly. And if I'm just sitting there, I can't really think of that much. And it makes sense because like, I guess my brain needs that like, that physical, like a stimulation or whatever as like a distraction in order to kind of channel the train of thought into this one thing. Anyway, I have kind of diverged a lot on that story from the main thing, which was me talking. Uh, I, I thought about it for a really long time and I think it makes perfect sense. I guess my brain moves really, really quickly be between ideas and stuff. And usually if I am trying to think about things and communicate them, I'm thinking about like all of these different possibilities of things that I could be saying, you know, different combinations of words or ideas and thoughts and trying to figure out a way that I could put them into a way to communicate that across to other people. And the, the issue is if I keep thinking like that, it's going so quickly that eventually it gets ahead of the, of the rate that I'm actually coming up with the words. Generally when I'm talking, I'm not even thinking about what words I'm using. My brain is already like, way somewhere else already it's already done with whatever i'm actually getting to talking then my mouth is just trying to like, catch up with my brain i guess if that makes sense not that i'm like super smart or anything because look at me does this look like the face of a smart person I didn't think so. It's just that my train of thought bounces around and moves so quickly that my mouth can't really catch up and actually put into words what I'm thinking. So uh, I, I kind of end up having to stop and I pause a lot and sometimes I, I kind of repeat syllables and consonants and stuff and try to actually Go, I have to go back, like I've already thought about what I'm gonna say, and then because my mouth was too slow trying to catch up with what I was actually trying to say, my brain almost has to go back to where I was before, so, and th that causes my, there it is, uh, that causes my speaking ability to act weird sometimes where I, I have to pause and repeat syllables and get flustered like this. So yeah, uh, I was diagnosed with ADHD and I think that that's the reason why I can't talk like a normal person. And it's kind of frustrating sometimes, but I guess it's, it's part of who I am and I gotta deal with it whether I like it or not. Anyway, I should probably go get to sleep because it's, uh, it's 1.30. And I'm really tired. You probably feel like yawning now. Because I yawned and they're contagious. <sighs> feel like yawning yet? Just wait, just wait. A little tickle in your throat. It'll, it'll come, it'll come. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to go to sleep actually. I have to edit this video first. <sighs> I'm not doing this to mess with you guys. I'm actually yawning this much. Though I would do it to mess with you. Don't think that I wouldn't. I don't love you that much. I, mean, I, I, I would just go to bed, but I have, to, I have to edit this journal entry so I can put it on the internet by 6 o'clock. And then I'll go to bed. This dedication. You're not even alive yet, and I'm that dedicated. You know, I'm impressive. Anyway, grandchildren, if you see me anytime in the me, future, you present, 
I... I want you... We should plant something. Like, like in a garden. Now actually, what we should do is we, could, we should plant a tree. We should plant a tree right now. The moment that you watch this, try to get me to plant a tree with you. And it'll be really nice because it'll be like one of those memories with you and your grandpa. And then one day, I'm going to die. But that tree will still be alive, hopefully. And that'll be like one of those things that even though I'm gone, you still have that physical representation of a memory of me. It's actually, that actually might be depressing. So I don't know if you should do that. Maybe. Think about it. Just think about it. Trees are good for the world, or whatever. So, depressing or not, do good for the world. <sighs> See you guys.